Hey guys, it's John, and today I am playing Bucket Detective. This is from the same developer as The Static That Speaks My Name, which I didn't end up playing on the channel because it kind of looked like a bummer. But I'm going to play this one because it's new, so it, it looks quirky. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, actually, I'm going to check, make sure the subtitles are on first. Common mistake I've been making more often lately. New game! So I have no idea what to expect, but I know that some people are playing this right now, and it's, it sure sounds quirky from the title. Bucket detective. Does he inspect buckets? Does he wear a bucket on his head? Wouldn't that obstruct his vision? So many questions. These are very basic controls. Cool. You, a 41-year-old man, David Davids. It's You're the same book name. Called Bucket Detective. Book is not good. Truthfully, you not care about write book. You not even like read books because reading gets headache from make think too hard. I see. You are married to wife who is abusive. By abusive, you mean she not do perverted sex whenever demanded. Oh, come to on. Get perverted sex. You approach girls in the street. They not give it and instead call you creep and pig. This is why he was writing Bucket Detective. Famous book make it impossible for girls to resist sex. Really? Especially glasses girls at nearby community colleges. Especially those, right. At dinner with friend of yours who have recent success in business, you say, writing book is hard. Is there not an easy way to write great book? Ghostwriter? Friend of yours smile with mischief and says, yes, yes there is. He hand you card with address and say, go here and do what asked of you. In exchange, you will get what is desired. And if you not like, you leave any time. You not think more than one second to decide this is plain because it's much simpler to create good words on empty page. So, one cold and rainy morning, you arrive at address and enter front door. And that's the setting for our game. Any questions? Why were they using I can has cheeseburger language there? Arrive at 4 Brave Amber Boulevard. I was in the middle of reading that. Dial 359. Use right click to show or hide the card. Ah, okay, so this is the objective. We got dial 359. It's a tough task, but I think we're up for it. Um, so E is to zoom, right. I'm left clicking. I don't think I can go in there. Alright, let's ignore that for now. Oh, I wonder what uh, those symbols are supposed to be. Perhaps they are swastikas. I don't know, because they're slightly different. Ah, a very edgy game. Alright, let's go ahead and hit play. Hi, my name is Gwen Sleepless. I'm a 23-year-old white male, and I'm the building's maintenance man, cook, and I also clean the toilets. And have a degree in nice arts history. the Dark Lord is reborn to bring in 10,000 years of terror, if people could visit the place where it all began, kind of like a museum to the origin of their torment. So I've installed these boxes, which I call Gwen boxes, all over the building to explain the significance of different areas. Obviously, since the Dark Lord Mishriel, the Seven-Tongued Slayer of Kings, the Roaster of the Innocent, the Defiler of the Damned has yet to rise, these Gwen boxes are kind of a work in progress. Hmm. So you've brought about the apocalypse. I see. Congratulations on that. Are you in there? Why do we give a shit about their privacy? Let's go ahead and just barge in. Door's not locked. What, just polite social norms is preventing us from going into this door? Never seen that in a game before. Oh, it would be rude if we went in there. Can you imagine playing like an, a JRPG like that? You come into someone's house to loot their items. Hey, wait a second. I don't think I can go just barge into this stranger's house. What kind of game would that be? Alright. I'm not sure what that was all about. Beth, you don't have to come home. You don't have to do anything you don't want. But please let your brother and me know that you're safe and getting our letters. Please, please, please. All is forgiven. All is forgotten. With unending love, Mom. 
Gwen, please respond to this, as Beth, of course, before we get unexpected visitors. Cyrus. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> uh, right, where, where are we gonna dial this number? I'll write on the phone, but I can't use that anymore, right? Uh, that's too bad. All right, you guys didn't miss anything. There's a uh, there's a shrine to the female reproductive system back there. Yep, shows the act of intercourse and uh, child being being born, all that fun stuff. I see. So I've got to dial these on the doors. It just clicked. All right, hang on. Where's door three? Six, five, okay. Where is three? Is it this? Okay, here we go. Watch this. I'm gonna dial three, five, nine. Boop. Oh, it shows up for you. That's no fun. I was feeling a little bit proud of myself for a second. Oh, well. Nine. I did it. What is this rewritable business card you have? Submit the necessary paperwork. What a thrilling game. Oh. I see, so it's in this room. Let's uh, start filing paperwork, guys. I was hoping for some bucket to, buckets to detect. Sacrifice the finger? Sorry, I made me stutter a little bit because it's just, it's a little surprising. Let's, uh, fuck it, it's not my finger. What do I care? Oh, this is the first page of a bucket detective. He awoke with fear and a gun in his hand on the road to St. Bucket's Beach. That's a little on the nose. Pesta Calva Mesa. That's a mouthful and not good marketing to have that in there. Los Hagos or the Diamond Shore. We'll go with Los... Los Agos. I sacrificed my finger, unfortunately. I guess I got it wrong. Oh, well. Lost my finger. Alright, this is the Journal of Gwen Sleeveless. April 8th, 1991. My journal pages keep falling out and making me lose them. I guess that's what happens when you buy a used journal that is basically rotting. I'm poor. <laughs> Alright, Gwen. Cool. Uh, what does this have to do with my paperwork, by the way? I kind of need to get on that. As you can see, I, it must be submitted. Um... What? Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we were looping for a second. These are the offices of the two fathers, Dr. Z.W. Francis and Jedediah Holcomb, who were the founders and leaders of our happy little... <laughs> I almost said cult, but it's a religion. There is a difference. It's a cult. The fathers believed that they were in fact one being that had been divided into two bodies. Yep, it's a cult. One being it's a cult. so much knowledge, power, and sexual charisma, the universe would be torn into shreds. So yeah. to keep that great power separated. The fathers worked without ever meeting face to face or speaking aloud to one another. Instead, they communicated by passing letters through the mail slot between their offices. It was in this way that they laid down the laws of Mishriel, the god among gods, the gimp in the graveyard, the pus of Xanadu. Ah, Xanadu from Scientology. I see. Let's go ahead and just come on in here, I guess. Dr. Z.W. Francis, known as the Scholar, was a mathematician, physicist, biologist, inventor, painter, and most importantly, a medical doctor specializing in the female reproductive system. And he was good at he none was the of first them. physician to do a deep, deep, deep study of the female body, from a medical perspective, of course. Right. And had the fools in the medical establishment not misinterpreted his work and taken away his license to practice medicine, the writings and tools he developed would be the cornerstone of modern gynecology. Oh, man. Just, uh... Return the spoon. Can I keep the spoon? Well, what I use... It's making that sound. 
What is making... Is it the spoon against the wall? It's an odd interaction to have programmed, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll take it back, I guess. Um, so is there anything else I'm supposed to do in here? Is, is the spoon the ultimate objective of this room? Alright, cool. Let's read this. Request to Lord Mishriel in exchange for service. Cyrus wants a harem of 9,999 virgin girls. Age 12 to 25. Right. Aww, uh, I don't really want to read the rest of them, I don't think. Hmm. Let's see what's in here. You got, uh... You want, you want this, uh, spoon? This, this noisy-ass spoon? I'm just gonna leave it on the floor. Ooh. By the Father's decree, when this document is stamped and submitted, thus begins the final phase of Mishriel's rebirth. Hmm. Let's in insert the paper then. Great. Oh, it doesn't- it doesn't like it. Is it the same thing? It is. Alright, so we got ourselves the cult symbol right here. Jedediah Holcomb, known as the Mystic, was a hypnotist, psychologist, poet, meditation guru, and expert on world religions. His most significant work was the unification of all major religious texts to place the Dark Lord himself at the center. Yes, everyone from Jesus Christ to the Buddha were in fact pawns of Mishriel, the breather of bile, the decapitator of slaves, the withholder of orgasms. Hmm... The breaker of change. <laughs> the queen of dragons. I said change, but I meant chains. Ah, uh, we just- we just shove it in there. Good. Inserted the paper. Gonna leave the spoon for now. Is there a missing spoon up here? Alright, I gotta submit this paperwork. Hang on, guys. Oh, wow! Where do I take this? Stamp the paper. Get it. With the- with the official cult seal. Uh, it's kind of only half of it, though. Do I have to get the other half stamped? Oh! It- it won't let me take it out of the... Right. Interesting puzzle. Alright, so, I'm gonna- I'm gonna get it stamped. Yeah, I got both of the stamps. Yeah, I'm gonna insert it. Hey, I submitted the paperwork. <laughs> Received the truth from the two fathers. Where, oh, where can I get that? Oh my, a secret passage. This is, again, from the Journal of Gwen. The fathers asked me to interior redecorate the building, but people have been complaining that they don't understand why there are so many plates, forks, and spoons on the wall. FTI, for their information, I saw a TV show about a palace in Europe, and they had plates and spoons on the wall there, so sue me for trying to make this place more elegant and give class. Gwen is extremely defensive. If you'll excuse me, I gotta find the truth. People also complain about having only, like, three paintings as decoration, but these are ZW's favorite paintings he painted, and he wants copies all over the place, so if you have a problem with them, that's not my problem. Haha. <laughs> who are you- who are you writing these to, Gwen? I don't think anyone's reading your little newsletter. It's your journal, right? Holy remains of Jedediah Holcomb. Okay, so we got ourselves an urn. We gotta take it somewhere, right? Can we take it out? Can we take it out? <gasps> it's not locked in place like the, uh, like the paper. Let's take it over here. To this secret hallway. Hmm. Oh, I didn't mean to throw it, sorry. Oh, it's the same room. 
Good to know. Toggle the doors. Oh. Whoa. The urns are repelling each other. That's interesting. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna place the urns on the chair. And I don't know what that sound was, but I, I think it means that we're doing it correctly. Since my let's just switch them strategy didn't exactly uh, receive a standing ovation because it was incorrect. Maybe this will do it. This will do the trick. I've done it. Yes. Now what? I put something on there. Let's uh, let's listen to this. With the rebirth of the Dark Lord soon to come, the fathers needed to be certain which of their followers were true believers. So they constructed a challenge called the Believer's Waltz. The fathers then sat in the chairs on this stage and telepathically delivered the precise steps required to complete the waltz. Those who completed the waltz were to be blessed with the gifts of the Dark Lord, while those who could not were locked away to die. Hmm, seems like an extreme punishment there for not being able to do something that isn't possible. All right, there's one in here too. Let's 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 hear about the crypt. On February 18th, the fathers delivered their seed to the holy female vessel mm. and then died of simultaneous heart attacks. Their bodies were cremated and their ashes preserved in urns while their souls were released into the building so that upon the Dark Lord's rebirth, they would be one with Mishriel, the putrid prince, the horn of Babel, the apple among the corn. You know what this reminds me of? Maids. Two founders who refuse to talk to each other and uh, communicate through notes. This whole facility and everything. Reminds me heavily of Maze. Maze was such a nice game. I, I really enjoyed it. Am I supposed to pray? I'm supposed to pray here. What? I have no idea. There doesn't seem to be any rules to this. Good. That's the valve symbol. Um, steam. Um, why are these red? Let's pick them. Okay. Okay. What? Am I supposed to like... Great. I don't understand how this game works. We did it! I received the truth from the two fathers. That's what it was. Complete the believers, Waltz. I don't think that's possible. Mostly because they're not here to telepathically give in instructions. Oh wait, but they are. Because their ashes are there. Awesome. These plants look so scared. Look, he's shaking. A little wimp. Yeah, get up off the ground. You disgust me. I'm impressed with how Cyrus has run things since the fathers died. He uses more physical violence than the fathers. The fathers just used their aura to get what they wanted. But the spread of Mishriel's illness has really slowed since he took over. When he's not beating my back with a metal rake as punishment for something I've done, I'm usually thinking, now that's a cool guy. Huh. Yeah, he's cool except, you know, he beats the shit out of me with a rake. He's cool, just except for that one weird thing he does. Other than that, he's an alright dude, you know, he's... I, you can blame him. Seriously, there are plenty of spoons. In the kitchen, Gwen. Alright. Yeah, that's, that is unacceptable, Gwen. I'm, I'm with you on that. What? I'm beginning the waltz. Well, how would I know the steps? Huh. How are we getting there? It's a bunch of frowny faces. And it says, Gwen was here. So sad. Are these confessional booths? Or are these, like, these are prison cells? Hmm. 
I see. So you have to waltz past your eventual future prison if you don't do it right? That's kind of cruel. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Boom. Got it. Uh, okay. This is an easy waltz so far. I'm just kind of walking in different directions. Pray. Okay. Pray. I feel like the music's a little off. I'm kind of causing that to happen. Uh... That's what I'm doing. Okay. What, where am I going? I've done it. I've completed the Believer's Waltz. And what a nonsensical experience it was. Deliver the genderless child to the elevator. As in like a doll? Is that what you mean by genderless child? Do you not know what a doll is? Okay, today the fathers let me out to visit the library. Is that a... Oh, that's a, that's a... <laughs> that's the water hitting the mattress. Uh, I was like, is that keeping the beat? One of those like, little meters that musicians use. Forget what they're called at the moment. I'm sure people will tell me in the comments. Or they'll at least Google it and act like they knew. It turns out my family name, Sleeveless, came about because my ancestor from 400 years ago was the only guy in his village to wear shirts without sleeves. Douche. He'd cut off his sleeves to show his arms for some reason. Maybe they were... musclier. This was very uncommon at the time, and he was eventually burned alive for this practice. Crazy! Wow, Gwen, your journal is really worth reading! Haha, <laughs> my journal is terrible. Seriously, like, none of my pages are staying inside. Haha. <laughs> Alright, excuse me when I've got to find the genderless child, so if you'll just... Excuse me. I wasn't sure if I'd do this, but... I thought visitors might want to know more about me. Their humble guide, Gwen Sleeveless. Oh, you're Gwen. So let's see. My parents died when I was two. I was sexually abused by the man who ran my orphanage. And I used to burn my face with cigarettes to get attention. Pretty standard stuff. I was 14 when I ran away, and 18 when the fathers took me in and gave me this bed, which they graciously placed under a leaky pipe to strengthen my mental strength, which they said I had none of. When I'm not cleaning toilets, I write songs about the fathers, I draw pictures of the fathers, and I pray to the fathers. As you can tell, I'm a pretty lucky guy. Okay. So far, to me, this game has been kind of taking the piss. It's been kind of... These are the jokes. Haha, -ha, this is the humor. Look at the penises, etc. And then you bring sexual abuse into the fold? I just... But then again, this is from the developer of the Static Speaks My Name, which, from what I understand, I didn't play it. was all... Uh, was a, a, a serious game about suicide. It's just very odd to me... The contrast between the two games so far and their treatment of serious subject matter. Just a little strange. This, this seems a bit in poor taste a bit. To just kind of throw that in there. Please return. Gwen. Uh-oh. I'm going to sacrifice my entire hand. Here we go. So this is from Bucket Detective. Kiss me, babe, and never forget, your heart is like a bucket. A place to put someone you love. That sounds... That works one way, but it doesn't work the other. Because that's not what a bucket is. Made of muscle and filled with blood. Again, not descriptive of a bucket. On the front of most Valentine's Day cards. That is... None, none of these are descriptive of a bucket, actually. 
But uh, one is probably the best line, so we're gonna go with that. And I'm gonna lose my hand. Oh, what a surprise! Didn't like that one, huh? Now we're pulling in uh, Resident Evil 7 right now. Except I don't think we're gonna get our hand stable back on, so... That's kind of a bummer. Whoa, crazy music. Remix. Beth seemed super nice, but when I brought her food today, she started crying. Told me she was being held against her will. That the fathers had drugged her and raped her and had ordered Cyrus to steal her child after birth. I explained to her that the sins of the world had corrupted her mind, and she is lucky it is so close to the child's birth so that Mishriel can be reborn to cleanse the filth from the streets and also from her mind. She didn't seem happy with my response. Haha. -ha. Again. I'm not getting... I'm not getting this in combo with sexual abuse themes. Oh, that's what Mishriel looks like. Rosie O'Donnell. I just never... I never thought that that was going to be their design, but they did it. And the fathers gave their seed to the woman with a pure heart, and seven months later the genderless child was born. And on that day the chosen one arrived and delivered the child to Mishriel, the father of the motherless, the leper among the clean, the jester of Gallipoli, so that he, the Dark Lord, would be reborn. The Gospel of John is interpreted by Jedediah Holcomb. That, uh, the interpretation takes some rather large liberties, I have to say. What? Do not bring my filth into this holy place, I gotta remove my clothes? How? How do I... Okay, I removed my clothes. Can I enter the... Eyes wide shut party over here. Um, I what am what am I doing right now? What? What am I doing? I. I'm just at a loss for words. I have no idea. What? So we're getting the baby out of here? No, damn it. Gotta deliver it to the elevator. I'm sorry, okay? I didn't know that checking my notes made me throw ya. Leave with baby? Baby in hand, you stumble into street and pass to unconscious. You wake up in hospital with caring wife inside, and her smile make you feel annoyed. Hospital people heal you and give you wooden finger, arm, and legs, and return you home. Wife is so desperate for love, she not ask where baby come from, but keep it and raise it his own. At first, you think baby cute, but now it only eat and scream and poop, and you regret to take with you. A friend of yours that tell you about the house is much angry. Say, you ruined everything. You say that followers of Mishrael is broken up, and few that remain now selling t-shirts at home. Your life not much good either. Basically just watch TV game shows and touch fiddlestick with wife out buying groceries. You consider to divorce wife, but then you must buy own groceries, which seem like major hassle. Baby grow up handsome and with much charisma, but with eyes of unfathomable darkness. By age of 17, Baby have many devout followers, which start you worried because after save Baby, you're not much nice to it. For example, sometimes you forget Baby's name, which is considered impolite for dad due to child.
Use chapter select to load the furthest reached chapter. So there's five endings to this thing? See, like, okay, okay. See, like, the ending seems to be this sort of dark humor omen takeoff, you know? Where, like, your kid is the Antichrist figure, right? Seems to hint at sort of a humorous, tongue in cheek sense of writing. But then you have serious abuse themes in the game. And it just, it seems to me like there's a disconnect there. Is it a satire? Is it a commentary on something? Is there some sort of parallel or illusion that I'm just not getting? Or is this just some like bullshit potato thriller type of thing where it's nonsensical for the sake of being nonsensical? Okay, so I know I've already run through the entire game, but I'm seeking clarification on certain things. So I'm gonna go through with developer commentary on and see if I can get anything, like some new information about uh, the thoughts behind this game. Sacrifice legs. Why would I do that? Um... So I went through the entire game again and listened to the developer commentary. It's mostly just about how the game was made and like the technical side of things and not really talking about the story or what the intent of the game was. So I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice my legs, I guess. Yeah, let's just do it. Oh, right, I'm naked because I <laughs> took my clothes off. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's do a bucket detective. It's rough. And is that it? Do I get a different ending this time? No? Well, I don't have a hand, and I don't have legs. Okay, oh, this is kind of interesting. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. What? Sacrifice baby. Well, we've come this far, why not? It's, it's Mishriel anyway, right? How is it being sacrificed in the elevator? Return home. Gladly. Let's see, uh... How our ending is different. Holy crap. Come on. I'll move out of the way of the subtitles this time. Roll out door and into street and all go black. Two days later, you awake in hospital with pain surged through your body. After a long recovery, you return home with wooden finger, arm, and legs. But still, you use wheelchair because it feel like racing game. When finally continue writing Bucket Detective, words flow out of you like water out of an upside down cup. Within short time, the book is finished and published and on many best book lists and selling like millions. With much success, you finally get a young girl as you've been warned. Some even much too young, if you catch my meaning, but morality have never been your favorite subject. Wife, she cared for you whole time of recovery, but now best kick her out to make room for new girls. Meanwhile, major cities go up in flames and dark force take over the world. Many are dying, many are infected with disease and psychosis and put into slavery, but you is not so interested. All you care do is roll a chair and make penis spit with pretty girls. Life is good. Life is good. Okay, well, we got two endings in this video, and I think I'm gonna leave it at that. Because... I don't really want to get the other endings. Okay, so, I, just, I mean, I, I played it a second time because 
the first time I finished, I was like, is it just me? Or is this game just kind of super edgelord? And I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt and be like, maybe it's a satire of bad indie games. I mean, you got the narration in the beginning with the broken English and everything, but it turns out that that was just... The, the, the narrator was the developer, and he just wanted it that way because he wasn't so great of a voice actor, according to him, and that way he didn't have to put much emotion into his words. There was a lot of stuff like that in the, in the developer commentary. But yeah, so that kind of throw that's, <laughs> throws that theory out the window that it's just a satire. So basically, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I know I, I'm, I've been, I've been an old man for my entire life. So maybe it's just one of those things. I don't get it. I don't get dark humor. I don't understand what's funny about it. And it's not in like a, that's offensive kind of way. I just find it unfunny. Like, I've been reading the Steam reviews for this game, they're all positive, and a lot of them are like, it's very humorous, it's very funny. I don't see it. I don't understand what's funny about it. And, and I, I understand that everyone has a different sense of humor, but still, it seems weird to put in some of the things that are in this game when it's, it's supposed to apparently be a funny game. I just don't get it. So, I don't know. Feel free to sound off in the comments if you agree or disagree. I'm actually very interested in hearing alternative opinions because, like I said, reading the Steam reviews for this thing, it's just like, oh, it's great. Oh, it's hilarious. And I'm, I'm on the other side of the fence thinking like, does, does anyone, does anyone disagree with this? Because I don't, I don't, I just don't, I just don't get it. If it's trying to say something, I don't understand it. If it's not trying to say anything, then I think it's a little bit tasteless. You know, that's just kind of where I'm at. So yeah, that was Bucket Detective. Let me know what you thought in the comments. We'll see you guys in the next one. Think critically.